Welcome back. You're still tuned into Markets Today on CNBC TV 18. Let's talk about the rest of the headlines that we are tracking for you. The fourth headline now. Aisha Motor traded 2% in the green. The company, which recently commenced operations at its new facility in Brazil, has been a very, that has been a very strong market for Royal Enfield. Sonia Shana is here with all those details. Sonia. So Aisha Motors has been in focus after Royal Enfield announced that they are commencing operations at their new Brazil facility and they are very optimistic on the Brazil market. They believe that Brazil will soon become the single largest market for Royal Enfield outside of India and Royal Enfield has seen a growth of more than 100% since 2019 in the Brazil market. Let's not forget that Royal Enfield had a very strong run in the month of November as well. The sales went up 37% on a year-on-year -year basis coming in at 70,766 units. This this is purely because of the sale of their new product, the Hunter 350cc, which has done very well. But Kotak uh, is a bit skeptical. They have put out a note say, where they have a sell with a target price of 2800 saying that the core portfolio without the Hunter 350 is actually not doing that well and remains below the FY18 levels. The portfolio is below FY18 levels because of affordability issues in the two-wheeler sector and cannibalization from the new product, which is the Hunter 350. Nevertheless, the stock... Uh, was doing well on the back of news flow that they've commenced operations at their Brazil facility. Sonia, thank you so much for joining us with all those details. To the fifth headline now, GSPL fell a quarter of a percent after the company won Monet Power bid. Now, GSPL can acquire Monet Power through IBC route for 410 crore rupees. Vivek is here with more details on the same and what it means for the company as well. Vivek? JSPL, a very interesting acquisition done by them. So what we understand and what we are reporting is that, you know, JSPL has won the bid to acquire Monet Power's power plant and this is via the IB, IBC route at MCLT and this particular acquisition has been done at rupees 410 crore by the company. So now, you know, just to understand, you know, what exactly is the asset of Monet Power. Monet Power unit actually, power unit is under construction, under liquidation also and this is near the Angul steel plant of JSPL. SPL. And, you know, it makes strategic sense as far as JSPL is concerned for, for this particular acquisition, given the fact that the company has three significant coal mines. So Utkal B1, B2 as well as C are the coal mines of JSPL that are near this particular power plant. So again, you know, it goes ahead and gives visibility as far as, you know, coal supply to the power plant is concerned. So we reached out the management, we got their comment as well, and we also got, uh, you know, the rationale for which, you know, they've gone ahead and made this particular acquisition. So, you know, this particular power plant, according to them, Monet Pass Angul plant has a capacity of over 1050 megawatt and uh, you know, Monet Pass Angul plant is at this point of time at an advanced stage of construction already and the main reason for this particular acquisition is that, you know, this particular plant is 20% more carbon efficient versus the existing units. So going forward, JSPL believes that this particular unit will ensure cheaper power as far as their own operations are concerned. Vivek, thank you so much for joining us and explaining to this us what it really means for the company as well. Uh, let's talk about the new kid on the block. The Harmaj crop made a stellar debut on the bosses today. It listed at a 12% premium over the issue price as well. And it is what is what was expected. That is because of the strong subscription uh, that this IPO saw as well. Now, in terms of valuations at this price, the stock trades at around 32 times FI22 EPS. And if we compare it with the peers as well, the likes of Rallis, you have uh, something like in India, pesticides, Hiran, Bab, Bharat, Rasan, it is slightly on the higher side, 32 times versus 10 to 18 times which the other stocks are trading at. About the company, it's an agrochemical company and is, is actually involved in the marketing, production, distribution of uh, agrochemicals such as insecticides, you have herbicides, fertilizers, antibiotics as well and has a strong export revenue as well. So it exports to around 25 countries including East Africa, West Asia, East Asia, Latin America as well. The company's financials have been very strong. So if we look at the revenues, around 200 crore rupees is what they did in FY20. And from those levels, now they did in three months of FY23, 200 crore rupees. Margins from levels of 9%, they are at 12.2% right now. And profits also for the company have been increasing. One of the reasons why the company or the IPO saw strong subscription as well. Fundamentals are strong, but right now it is on the higher side as far as valuations are concerned. But yes, good listing today. The stock ended higher by 12.5%. That is about the new listing today, but moving on, India's cotton yarn producers are not happy. Cotton prices, which had hit an 11-year high in May this year, have cooled down, but the pickup in domestic demand for cotton yarn has been sluggish, while weak global demand is keeping the export option out of reach. CNBC TV 18, Jasilia K and Shilparani Peta report. 
cotton yarn spinning and ginning mills, 2022 has not been a comfortable one. Cotton prices in India shot up to an 11-year high of 1.1 lakh rupees per candy in May this year, and that meant a sharp rise in input costs for these mills. Even passing on some of this higher cost to their customers offered limited relief. Now, prices have cooled down considerably to around 65,000 to 69,000 rupees per candy. These lower prices have sparked some revival in domestic demand. Industry body Cotton Association of India says spinning mills, which were working at 40 to 50 percent capacity when prices were higher, have hiked production to 60 to 70 percent of capacity. But mills say this pickup in demand is not enough to make a material difference. To make things tougher, global shocks have dampened the export market. Prices have corrected now uh, to a significant extent. And now the difference between uh, Indian uh, cotton and uh, international cotton is uh, around 5 to 6 percent. However, uh, now the impact what we are seeing is on account of slowing global demand for textile uh, due to recessionary trends that we are seeing across various geographies. Kerej says cotton yarn export volumes have fallen 59 percent in just the first half of this year and are expected to fall by another 28 to 30 percent in the second half of FI23. The higher input costs, weak demand and lower capacity utilization put pressure on margins and even forced a few mills to down shutters. Players say passing on the higher costs has offered limited relief and a report by Crystal says margins for cotton spinning mills could be squeezed by a further 5 to 7 percent before this financial year ends. The cost of the raw material was increasing. Obviously, you had to increase the pricing of your product. So that happened. So I would say, yes, we did shrink our margins, but I wouldn't say for a longer duration because eventually you have to increase your price. My overall turnover has definitely been impacted. India's cotton production is estimated at around 344 lakh bales this year. That's 10% higher than last year. Experts say this should prompt a further drop in cotton prices. But they warn that even that won't bring back prices to pre-COVID levels, meaning cotton mills will have to continue to deal with higher input costs, slugging domestic demand and a weak export market for a while longer. In Mumbai with Jasilia K, Shilpa Rani Peta. Okay, meanwhile, the industry body Cotton Association of India has requested the withdrawal of 11% of import duty on cotton. The body says, and I quote, Indian cotton prices are ruling at 10 to 15% higher than the international cotton market. The removal of import duty on cotton is necessary to provide the Indian textile industry with a level playing field. End of quote. The body feels that this will allow mills to compete internationally and run at full capacity as well. So those are the updates from the textile industry specifically in the spinning segment. But with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Markets Today. Thank you for watching.